Bestbookbits.com presents What the Most Successful People Do Before Breakfast by Laura Vandercrum. Mornings are a madcap time for many of us. We wake up in the, in a haze, often after hitting the snooze a few times, then we rush around to get ready and out the door so we can officially start the day. Before we know it, hours have slipped by us without us accomplishing anything beyond downing a cup of coffee, dashing off a few emails, and dishing with our co-workers around the water cooler. By the time the workday wraps up, we're exhausted and defeated that any motivation to accomplish something in the evening has vanished. But according to the time management expert, Laura Vandercrum, mornings hold the key to taking control of our schedules. If we use them wisely, we can build habits that will allow us to lead happier, more productive lives. Drawing on real-life anecdotes and scientific research that shows why early hours of the day are so important, Vandercrum reveals how successful people use mornings to help them accomplish things that are often impossible to take care of later in the day. While many of us are still in bed, these folks are scoring daily victories to improve their health, careers, and personal lives without sacrificing their sanity. For instance, former PepsiCo chairman and CEO Stephen Reinman would rise at 5am, run 4 miles, pray and eat breakfast with his family before heading to work to run a Fortune 500 company. What the most successful people do before breakfast is a fun, practical guide that will inspire you to rethink your morning routine and jumpstart your life before the day has even begun. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of What the Most Successful People Do Before Breakfast. Vandercrum acknowledges that mornings can be a rushed and chaotic time of the day. And starting your day out like this is the reason that so many people live with the understanding that they simply do not have enough time. Successful people, Vandercrum explains, utilize these early mornings to their advantage. It's a time of day where they can have complete control over their schedule. Getting up early to tackle a few of your key priorities or favorite hobbies is an excellent way to focus on these tasks without distraction. As soon as other people are awake in your household or people who try to contact you are awake, you are opening yourself up to distractions. If it has to happen, then it has to happen first. If you leave the important tasks until the end of the day, they're unlikely to get done. This is why a lot of successful people will exercise before 6am. This way, they can tick it off and get on with the day. Leaving it until the end of the day only opens up more opportunities to skip it or give it a miss. Vandercrum describes willpower as similar to a muscle. Just like your own muscles, overuse will lead to burnout, and the correct use and practice will lead to more strength. If you start your day by getting some important things done, you can ensure that your willpower is at its strongest. The likelihood is that by 5 p.m., your willpower is starting to wane. The key is to work on your routines and habits. Initially, willpower will be essential, but eventually, an automation will happen and they will become habitual. All successful people will turn their important tasks into habits. Important but not urgent things. The best morning rituals are activities that, when practiced regularly, result in long-term benefits. There are three key things Vandercrum recommends you try and achieve in the mornings. Number one, complete the key work tasks first thing in the day. By doing things, you are avoiding the distractions of emails, meetings, and other people. Select one important task and get that done first. In doing this, you are nurturing your career. And number two, Vandercrum recommends you utilize your mornings to spend some time with your loved ones, whether it's sitting down to breakfast with your kids or taking 10 minutes to drink a coffee with your partner. Create a routine with a few moments of quality time together. This allows you to nurture your relationships. And number three, finally, you should ensure that you are nurturing yourself, usually in the form of exercise. Get this done in the morning so that you've started your day on the right foot and put in yourself first. Change up your mornings. There's a couple of key steps you can take to take your mornings from a chaotic rush to a time you actually look forward to. Firstly, Vandercrum recommends that you actually track your time throughout the day. Track a few days by keeping a journal to figure out what points in the day you most likely wasted time. Reflect on this and make the changes required to utilize your time more effectively. Next up, take a step back and consider what your perfect mornings would look like. This is going to be entirely individual, so Vandercrum can't tell you what to visualize. But this exercise will help you set your goals and have something to aim for. Another time-focused tip, Vandercrum encourages you to consider the logistics of your morning activities. Work out the timings of everything you need to get done in the morning. For example, a shower may take 10 minutes, including drying off and getting dressed. Consider this timing when you decide what time you need to wake up in the morning. 
and use that time to decide what time to go to sleep the evening before. As discussed previously, the key is building the habit. The key is building the habit. Turning this new approach, these new tasks into a ritual, something you'll do automatically. Vandercram suggests you start small and he introduce things one or two at a time. Don't try to radically overthrow your whole routine with 10 new tasks. It will be too overwhelming. Finally, Vandercrum acknowledges that things change. Your routine right now might work for you, but in five years, it may not be applicable anymore. You need to accept this and have the ability to adapt. What the most successful people do on the weekend. How many of us are wishing our time away holding out for the weekend? And then the weekend arrives, it flies by, and we look back, having accomplished almost nothing. It's an easy trap to fall into. Vandercram points out that between the time you knock off work, 6 p.m. on Friday, and the time you wake up, 6 a.m. on Monday, you actually have 60 whole hours. And even if you sleep 24 of those 60 hours, you're still left with 36 hours. That's almost the same number of hours you'll spend working in a full-time job. Vandercram suggests that just as you have working hours when you are online, available and working, you should essentially clock off or go off the grid on the weekends to allow some rejuvenation. How to plan a weekend. Vandercram suggests that you actually ask yourself what you want to do more of with some extra time. Create a weekend dream list, things you want to get done during Saturday and Sunday, and allocate a slot for them. E.g., dinner out with a loved one on Saturday night, yoga and coffee with a friend on Sunday morning. Vandercram 6 Tips for Planning Your Weekend Number 1. Dig Deep Try and remember the things you used to love doing. Even as a kid, just because you haven't done something in years doesn't mean you can't do it now. Number two, use the mornings in the weekends too. Often this is wasted time. Use them. Don't sleep in till 11 a.m. And number three, take the opportunity to create fun traditions, e.g. pancakes on Saturday mornings or heading to the local farmer's market on Sundays for a coffee. And number four, schedule downtime for yourself. It doesn't have to be or go. There's nothing wrong with spending an hour napping in the sun or reading on the couch. Number five, make time to explore your local and distant surroundings. Go to a new park for a walk or take a train trip to a nearby city for the day. And number six, Sunday evenings do not have to be a wasteful time where you're dreading the following day. Plan something fun to do on Sunday evenings. A top tip from Vandercrem is to use some time on the weekend to schedule your week ahead. At any appointments, tasks, chores, and errands that will need to be done alongside your usual working day. What the most successful people know about the weekends is that life cannot happen only in the future and cannot wait for some day when we are less tired or less busy. What the most successful people do at work. If you make certain choices in your work though, if you develop certain disciplines and invest your time instead of squandering it, you can do more with the time you have. Vandercram suggests you ask yourself a few of the following questions. Do you enjoy work? Is there a better way that you can be progressing in your career so that your work is more enjoyable? Is there a better way to use your working hours so that when you are working, you are producing the best possible results? Vandercram also feels strongly that we shouldn't brag about how many hours we work in any given day or week as a direct indication of how committed we are or how successful we are in our work. It doesn't matter how many hours you are there, it matters what you get done in those hours. Discipline one, mind your hours. Your time is literally being used up as we speak. There's no pushing, stopping, or rewinding it. You can't rewind it once you've used it all up. We all receive the exact same number of hours each day, week, month, year. You've got to decide how to best use it. One way to try to establish how you're currently using your time and find opportunities for improvement is to keep a time log. Write down how long different tasks take you and how they fit into your day. Then you can evaluate whether you are spending too much time on certain tasks. Discipline two, plan. The first step is to plan to plan. Dedicate a slot of time every week, either at the beginning of or the end, to sit down and schedule your week ahead. Estimate some key goals, both short-term and long-term, and plan out how you're going to achieve them. Don't rely on your memory or your own mind. Anything you've got going on in your head, write it down and make it into a plan. For example, every Sunday, Vandercram will sit down and write her priority list. She considers all of her goals and plans out what the next week will hold in relation to achieving these goals. 
This list will include everyday work tasks as well as small steps to achieve those long-term goals. Starting with Monday, Vandergrim will be quite tight with her schedule and she'll keep Tuesday through Friday a bit looser. Then, as each day closes, she'll make a few moments to fine-tune the next day's schedule. This way, she ensures that almost everything gets achieved by Friday. Discipline 3. Make success possible. Make success possible. Vandercrum emphasizes the importance of being realistic with your schedule. Despite hundreds of items swirling around your head, you can't schedule them all for Mondays. You have to find a place that suits your lifestyle and is maintainable. Vandercram explains that successful people look at their to-do list as much more than a list. They become a physical contract. Anything written down on the list will be completed. That's a promise. Obviously, Vandercram acknowledges that things happen, life happens, and sometimes your day isn't going to go quite as planned. But examining your priority list and creating a system that works for you is key to remaining accountable. Vandercram recommends setting six priorities per day. Three to be completed that day, and the other three can be small steps working towards long-term goals. If required, set some accountability to your goals. Tell someone about them and get them to ask you regularly to check you're on track. Creating a mental trigger is a good idea, for example. Whenever you see the number 11, could be on the clock, on an email, etc., consider a time to check your to-do list to make sure you are on track. And discipline four, know what works. Acknowledge what tasks distract you and take your attention away from your priorities. Whether this be checking emails or doing work that should have been delegated. And work on removing these distractions from your day. Schedule breaks regularly. This is to avoid burnout. Try a walk around the block or some lunchtime stretching. This will allow you to take a mini mental break and return feeling refreshed and more productive. Discipline 5. Practice. Everyone needs to practice, whether you're a sports person, business person, or a musician. You have to practice your profession in order to get better. Don't just rely on autopilot. Take a quick review of the things you do regularly. Dedicate some time to practice and improve upon these skills. Remember to critique yourself and be open to constructive criticism for others. And discipline six, pay in. It is no longer sufficient to be employed. One must remain employable. That means monitoring that excellent concept of career capital. Vandercram uses the term career capital to describe someone's total experience, knowledge, personality, character, and network. It is the sum of all things that are a part of you and therefore make you useful in your field. If you're lucky enough to have a high career capital, you can cash in to take a leap in your career ladder or to take a break without affecting your ability to earn a living. To be successful is to pay into this account daily. The way you can pay into your account can be in any form. For example, a website or a blog where you publicize yourself and create your own brand. Another way to pay in is to work on building a network around you full of knowledgeable people who are loyal to you and have your back. Real career capital comes from having lunch or sharing your network with someone who's just been fired from a job she loved. These are the moments that matter. Vandercrum points out that you may not feel like you need to cash in on your career capital right now, and you might never need to, but it's something worth cultivating and growing. You should never be without it. And discipline seven, pursue pleasure. As she puts it, I can't imagine what it would be like to live for the weekend. Vandercrum explains that this is the key. Successful people enjoy their work just as much as they enjoy their weekends. The simple act of making progress on a task or working towards a goal actually brings you joy. The more productive you can be, the more joy you will feel. Vandercrum explains that successful people are constantly evaluating what parts of their day bring them pleasure and which parts do not. They focus on spending more time on pursuing their pleasures and less time on other tasks. Whether this be by delegation or or automation, or simply deleting certain tasks out of your day. Conclusion, key takeaways. There are seven key disciplines. Number one, mind your hours. Understand how you use your time and make improvements. Number two is plan. Planning is essential. Make time to plan. And three, make success possible. Make it easy on yourself. Be realistic. Set six priorities each day, three for immediate completion, and three, long-term. Number four, know what works. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Understand what works for you and fine-tune your schedule appropriately. 
And number five is practice. No matter how you're disciplined, practice it regularly. Continue learning. Number six, pay into your career capital, and you never know when you might need it. And number seven, pursue pleasure. Do the things you enjoy. And that's a wrap on what most successful people do before breakfast. Subscribe to the channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. If you like reading and want to get involved in sharing knowledge and spreading great book summaries, connect with myself by emailing info at bestbookbits.com to join us and the team. Thanks for watching and listening and have yourself an amazing day. Go out there and create your morning routine.